Marinda. And I'm Erin. And we just wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about our journey and how we met and how this nesting page got started. So we met in 2013 randomly. Um, Aaron was in town playing ice hockey for one weekend in Nashville and I was about out and about downtown when I didn't really want to be and um, we met and we got married five months later five months later very short and um, well we both met later in life and people told us just wait it's okay enjoy your life yeah don't Have worry about single. getting married and making a family real fast That's right. so so we didn't and we didn't meet each other until we were in our 30s I just turned 30 when I met her and um, well the first year of our marriage let's see we had a, a mini moon in Lake Lure mm -hmm. and then we had a real honeymoon supposed well, to be supposed to in Galveston Texas we went down there to take a cruise for our honeymoon a seven-day cruise through the Caribbean like three or four different stops and the day before we were supposed to leave we had been down uh, to see the Houston rodeo with some friends and the day before uh, we were supposed to leave they said that there was an oil spill in, That's the, right. in the port an oil spill an oil spill so for our honeymoon we boarded a ship thinking they were gonna clean the oil spill up and that we were gonna get to go and we were stuck on the ship for two days and then they finally let us out mm -hmm. with 2,500 other people. Like cattle. Yes. And I distinctly think, remember thinking to myself, there's got to be sick people on here because people are coughing. Well, I had been in Denver for a little while and my body didn't acclimate to the climate. I had what they call skier's nose from lack of humidity in the environment. She would cough and... and have blood coming out of her nose all the time. It was Unexplained just, bruising. It was insane. All that good stuff. So, um, you know, I just thought I wasn't doing well with the climate. But anyway, long story short, I contracted CMV, which is cytomegalovirus. You can look that up online. And mostly infants get it, but I got it as an adult. A lot of us are carriers, but if you get it, you can become very ill if your immune system's already weak. So that's what happened. I came home from our honeymoon, our non-existent honeymoon, <laughs> to the ER in yeah. Denver. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. They kept saying that I had, you know, that I was just sick or whatever. It took like three or four doctors to... To figure that out they kept saying oh you're just unhappy let me give you Prozac I'm like I'm not unhappy I'm sick and finally mm -hmm. one nurse practitioner took a 10 panel test so I do medical missions around the world so I thought I've got to have some sort of worm some parasite some something and she finally said I think I know what you have the unexplained bruising the rashes the fatigue and so she did a test for CMV and that's what happened well with that um, she said we shouldn't try to conceive for at least a year because our baby could die. So yay, happy first year of marriage. <laughs> Almost died then. Uh, and so our second year of marriage came along and um, uh, we went on our honeymoon part due to Jamaica after to one Jamaica. of my medical missions. Right. I flew there from my medical mission location and Aaron flew there from the States. We had a great honeymoon. Well, I became pregnant. That's right. And, um, and then shortly after that, we miscarried mm -hmm. and so um, that was the second year of our marriage and um, we I guess went to go figure out why I miscarried from yeah. the OB doctor and from they the sent OB. us to well, we had the, the reproductive doctor because of a postcoital test mm -hmm. so that was um, where we have intercourse and then he comes and checks out everything inside uh, of her and, and it ended up he 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 noticed that there were no sperm that were living inside of her and this was after two tests and that's oh. when he referred us to a, um, a fertility clinic and we were like why we don't understand but we just did because we were grieving the loss of a miscarriage and so we just did what they said but from the minute I walked in that door to the fertility clinic I knew it was not the right place that's but right. because I was in a vulnerable state I didn't push to not be there and um, they gave me Clomid to make 
more eggs, even though I had plenty of eggs. We, mm -hmm. All of our tests came out clear, his sperm, my eggs, the tubes, everything was healthy. But um, they gave me Clomid and my body did really well with it. So well um, that I had the hyper ovarian um, stimulation. That's and right. so um, by that point I found a different doctor and she had checked on me and said your ovary could possibly burst so you don't need this anymore because you know your it's body's doing too doing well. Doing too much, yeah. So after that point we stopped taking that and um, which we didn't know why we were taking in the first place and then I hemorrhaged and so I feel like I almost died that time too. Was on iron, missed a medical mission, was really really unhappy, hemorrhaged again mm -hmm. and they said we're gonna have to do a DNC and take out that lining because nobody can pass that. And Aaron and I prayed and we we're on the phone with my mom as well and she prayed. And then by the grace of God, I passed it on my own because that following Tuesday, I was supposed to have surgery. Mm -hmm. We'd already done the pre-op appointment and I have some pseudo cholinesterase deficiency, which means I don't process anesthesia well. Basically, I vomit all the time. So I really was not looking forward to surgery. So we went in there, and it's the one appointment. Mm -hmm. The one appointment I didn't go to. I've, I've, <laughs> I was diligent to go to every appointment because I wanted to be involved with the whole process. And, and you know, there's sometimes where she doesn't. Um, well, she, just sometimes her memory gets gets lost on a couple things. So it it was helpful for me to just be there, and and we could both like rack things off of each of other. Things. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is one appointment he didn't go to, and my doctor checked inside me before surgery and said, well, there's nothing to operate on. It's gone. And I was like, that's right. Praise God. <laughs> so my mom and I were high-fiving. The nurse was asking if she could share our miracle because I'd passed what they said that I couldn't pass. And that's because God was there with me through that whole journey. That's right. And from there, we were like, it's time to just heal. So for yeah. a long time, we just, six plus months, we didn't do anything except try naturally. So... So that's when we took a break for about six months or so and didn't do much of nothing and except naturally and then started looking at different avenues for conception. And so we looked at um, IVF and IUI. We really weren't sure um, how we felt about those things, how God felt about those things. So we had to really search and pray yeah. for that. And then we looked at adoption, although Aaron wasn't wanting to adopt at first. I knew I wanted to always adopt and we talked about it but always just thought we would have our own first and then adopt. And, uh, and God for me it. I didn't care which way because I've done missions before and see children yeah. around the world that need homes so I didn't care one way or the other. I knew I was going to adopt either before or after we were pregnant. Yeah. Just had well to so we had that door open. Work on that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had um, some Airbnb guests that stayed at our camper one summer and they had a, um, done embryo adoption. So they did um, the National Embryo Donation Center in Knoxville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and they adopted an embryo that way and that's how they have their son. And so we started looking at that option. So we had several different paths open for us. As we were going through the process for NEDC, for embryo adoption, we decided um, we we already were in the queue for adoption, so fostering and adopting. We were just waiting to see what happened with that. Yeah. And um, and we did a couple IUIs that failed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we said, well, we really want to give it a shot to have life on our own in my womb uh, before we go to the embryo donation route. And so we did that. That's right. We tried an IVF cycle and actually two Aaron cycles. Aaron was very very hesitant because yeah. of how well I do with medication. But instead of being the two percent that reacts to Clomid like I did, he we said believed we were this gonna time be... we were going to be the ninety-eight percent. So we we believed, uh, we prayed, and we had our faith in God that He would get us through that, and He did. And Aaron uh, gave me my shots, except for my stomach one. He gave me the right. ones in the hind end, which were terrible. Horrible Tried to boohoo like a baby to get out of it, but he still Horrible had to do for it. me too, though. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so we did all of that, and they had gathered I think 12 um, embryos together 12 embryos. that we had made so that was super exciting and then they transferred out of those there was five that were good quality right. uh, they transferred three in me because I was older you know that advanced maternal age mm -hmm. that we don't believe in I was like 30 what five 36 right. seven something like that 
and they put three in and they didn't survive. And then the next cycle, one didn't survive thawing and then they put one in and it also didn't survive. So That's we right. didn't really know why, you know, yeah. out of Especially all five babies the, we had made, plus the, the one Especially when the doctors naturally. were like, it's gonna work this time, it's gonna work. And mm -hmm. it's just, it didn't. So it was definitely frustrating. And, yeah. But we got through it. Um, and to have it. that natural pregnancy that failed and then have, you know, four put in me that failed, I was really thinking to myself, there must be something wrong with my immune system or something fighting off things. And um, that's always been in the back of my mind mm -hmm. since that first post-cortal test. Um, but nobody ever seemed to think that was an issue. So, from there, uh, that was in 2017. Early 2017. It was like mid, I think April, May, something like that. And then all of a sudden, um, I was leading the ladies' life group. And in, um, we had been with another adoption agency for about 13 months. And in October, had swapped over to Bethany Christian Services. And then... We were the fastest adoption they ever had <laughs> because we got a call on December the 18th saying, you've been selected. And we were like, okay. And they wanted us to come into the office and the meet day. the birth parents the next day. So the next day we went in and met the birth parents at two o'clock. We spent a couple hours with them. And at 4.15 PM, I was driving home. And um, we'll tell more about this adoption greeting story with uh, birth parents later. but. Um, at 4.15 p.m. when we left, uh, we got a phone call. Mm -hmm. And the funny part about that was, is that I was joking with the birth parents. They were asking, what are you gonna do for Christmas? And I said, well, we're gonna go home and spend time with my mom in East Tennessee. And I said, unless, you know, unless you, you give us a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and joked, you know, laughing. Cause I know it's a long process, you know, eight weeks here and there and the other. Yeah. Well. I guess the joke worked, I don't know. God had his plan. So we found out at 4.15 p.m. on December the 19th that we were gonna be parents of a three week old seven pound baby boy. boy. And so the next morning we were scheduled to go to the adoption agency. The parents, birth parents wanted to hand him to us and have a ceremony, which was really unique. Uh, it was already unique that there were two birth parents, so we mm -hmm. felt really blessed. And so we went the next day. Babies R Us opened at 9 a.m. We were there right when they opened. That's right. We got the essentials. We got a car seat, bassinet, formula diapers, and wipes. And then we got one Christmas outfit. So, <laughs> and the guy there was an angel. He came out, helped us shop for things. We had no clue what we were doing. James, right? James was his name. And, um, he was an angel sent from God, helped us get all these demo models and all that. And we then, ran in there like, <laughs> what's going on here? And yeah. this guy just swooped in and said, okay, here's here's what we're going to do. <laughs> then we showed up at the agency at 11 o'clock. And so from 4.15 p.m. the day before to 11 o'clock, we had to become parents. Mm -hmm. We had no nursery. We didn't know what age child we were going to have. Um, but God provided everything we needed. And people showered us with the things um, that we needed and, and we were so excited that we could keep our son Thompson right. alive for that's that right. first 24 hours. So, so then we understood really in our minds, that's why our IVF processes didn't work. Um, yeah. or maybe it was because God wants us to persevere through the experience, um, that we've been through to share with others and to give encouragement and hope. Um, if we had had the IVFs work, or been pregnant naturally, we wouldn't have Thompson. And now, That's right. it's like he came from my womb, basically. Um, birth parents are dark hair, dark eyed, kind of more olive tone. He's white like me, blonde, blue eyed, stout <laughs> like his daddy. God just put the cherry on top. We're just so blessed that that didn't work when at the time we were devastated. Mm -hmm. And so we just wanna encourage you to hold on to the journey that you're on. It may not seem like what you think it should be. It may not feel good, but God is with you. That's one thing I learned, you know, when I was dying of CMV, when I didn't think our marriage was gonna survive, when I hemorrhaged and bled out and almost died. Like I've almost died like every year of our wedding, or three marriage, eggs didn't every take year of our marriage. Didn't take, yeah. <laughs> For like four years, you know. When all that didn't happen, I thought, where are you, God? 
when really he told me I was with you the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so just hold on. Just know he's with you. Um, from that point, we were raising up Thompson, you know, for like two years. And then we thought, gosh, you know, we still aren't pregnant, even though we've been trying naturally. So we went back to get checked out. And now at this point, my eggs are getting old, Joey. Like, whereas two years ago, they weren't. Which we don't really care because, you know, I don't feel old. That's and right. um, I'm still healthy. And God's still the divine physician. But it still stinks because it's like, okay, if it didn't work years ago when I was perfect data, perfect health, how's that look now? Mm -hmm. And so we went through a couple IUIs and they didn't work. And we said, we're not ready to move through IVF yet. Although I did research a facility in Barbados that does um, fertility and they were super awesome. We've been yeah. in touch with them recently. They've been so compassionate, so caring to look at our tests, to look at our records and not just label me as old. Mm -hmm. When I'm like, he the same age almost, like why ain't they talking about him being old? It's always the woman, anyway, soapbox. But basically I said, I think my immune system's killing off stuff. And they said, well, we've got a test that will tell, you know, if that's the case. And so we did blood work, had that sent off and has different parts of that that can tell if your immune system's fighting off things. Yeah. And so one of my sections, yeah. you know, one of my segments of that was higher than normal. So obviously I got a stronger immune system. Yay me. Basically when we get pregnant, I just have to take prednisolone to lower my immunity to everybody else's normal level. Again, God made me. He did what he did. So I just got to deal with it. But it seems like every step we take that we get a little bit more information to the jigsaw puzzle mm -hmm. of this journey. And my goal is to not be like, okay, when I'm 40 coming up in September, I'm done. Although I might be back on here and be like, I really am done. Like, I'm not trying no more. <laughs> if I could just keep hanging on for those puzzle pieces to figure out what's going on um, and just have faith in the journey, that's where we're at. And so back when, I guess, before we had Thompson, our church was holding a baby night every year, every November. Mm -hmm. And tell them a little bit about what that is, Aaron. Yeah, it's just... Um it's where um, families come in, some that uh, are thinking about having a baby and just kind of on the fence, uh, couples that are actively seeking to have a, a child and either just close into it or are long into it. And then um, for families that are currently pregnant and just, um, it's just a night of prayer and, and, um, and covering, covering um, for everybody and time of worship to to celebrate God's uh, divine power and and just the the miracle of birth um, it's it's always it's always been helpful for us even though sometimes we we haven't been wanting to go because you know that it's been year after year that we've gone to this thing and year after year we see the people that we were standing in line with um, seeking for for a baby and and those baby, those they would have success stories by the end of the year, and 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 we, we hadn't got pregnant. there yet. <laughs> so, well, one year I was like, okay, God, I'm I'm just not going. And He's like, yes, you are. And you know, like when your father tells you to do something, you know you're supposed to do it. It was like that. That's right. And I was like, I don't have no baby to show for it, you know. And God told me He's like, but you have faith, and that's what you need to go and do. So I told Aaron that that I needed to go and share that. And he's like, okay. When we got there, I was like, no, I'm, I don't need to share. And he's like, <laughs> the guy said, I was like, okay. So I, we did. We got up there and we shared how we'd been there many years through this baby night. And we weren't standing up there with physical baby in our hands like the others. We were standing there saying, although we don't have that baby in our hands, we have the faith that God is going to provide that life. Yes. And then shortly thereafter in December... Like we, it was like 18 days later. 18 days later, we were given our son. Yeah. And um, that's just to show that we still pray, we still hope. Mm -hmm. Everybody's journey is different. It doesn't mean one's right or wrong. At that point, we had created a group called The Nest. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where this nesting tab came from. We created a group called Nest for people who were like us, who you know get married, think that the pregnancy journey is going to be easy. You're just going to get married, have babies, and yay. Nobody ever tells you that's not the way it is. And we wanted a place where people could come 
who've been trying to conceive for a year or more without success, those who had miscarried, or those who were seeking information on fostering and adopting. Yeah. And we were like, God, we ain't the experts on this. Like, how are we going to run this group? But, but we wanted to do something because we'd been through this journey and felt like we had done it all through all by ourselves. And, and there were mm -hmm. things along the way that, looking back, we could have said, or we could have we could have seek guidance from from a couple to say hey this is what we're thinking mm -hmm. or what's the proper steps and we just didn't have that and didn't know where to go for it so yeah we didn't even know people miscarried until we miscarried right. and then people came out of the woodwork oh, talking two about miscarriages. I miscarried. I've had three miscarriages and it's like wow mm -hmm. just opens opens up a new perspective when mm -hmm. things like that happen it's 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 nothing to to be ashamed of it's just we wanted to support people who right. had didn't know where to start because that was us. So, Nest Group's been going on now for about two years. Now. About two years now, and we have had between like five and seven couples at any given time. Mm -hmm. And couples will come and go. We've had couples who've had um, successful pregnancies um, with babies, and we've had people who've had losses, and we've had people who are still trying to conceive, and we've had people who've decided to adopt. So, this group's been going on two years, and as we said. We've had a lot of different successes, we've had challenges, but the cool part is, is that we get to go through those things together with other mm -hmm. people. And they get to go through them with us. So we're not the only ones praying for them. They're covering us with prayer, we're seeking God's word. And so part of this nesting tab is to help give you some resources of places to go for some support, uh, places to seek strength and comfort in difficult times, mm -hmm. and just to let you know you're not alone. Um, I find that this process ebbs and flows. Some days we're like, yes, we got it. Like we can make it another day and we can try some more. And then some days I'm like, I'm done. Like mm -hmm. I'm just thankful for what God's given me and then move on. And we just want you to know it's okay wherever you're at, whatever spot you're in. Um, and so that's why we created this video is to encourage you, tell you a little bit about our journey and to show you um, about our nesting process. That's right. Hopefully throughout the future we'll be able to share some more of our journey um, and most recently we have just been um, getting the results from that immune test and then um, seeing some natural um, doctors for chiropractic and for acupuncture for me which I really enjoy mm -hmm. which is a change from the other stuff and and then most recently I had a hysteroscopy where they found some polyps. So that's going to need to get removed. And um, it just goes to show that, you know, you don't know what's next. Um, but I'm taking it one step at a time. You know, right. tracking the basal body temperature. You know, looking at taking cervical mucus. You know, doing vitamins. You know, doing all of these things. And just taking one step at a time. In the meantime, enjoying the family we have. Um, being with Thompson. Um, and just knowing that he's going to be blessed one day. Uh, with a sibling That's right. and we're just going to have faith that however God brings that whether it be embryo adoption in the future or adoption or fostering or naturally in our womb um, that that will happen right. so we just wanted to share a little bit about our journey we want to encourage you and um, are just, thinking about you during this time That's right.